Hey readers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire Books, and I'm here with my March Roundup. So last month of February, I only read two books, so I'm happy to report that I read six books in March, so we're getting, we're getting better here. So let's talk about what I read and what I thought about it. The first book I read in March was The Book of Longings by Sue Monk Kidd. This is a book that is a historical fiction account of a woman whom Sue Monk Kidd casts as the wife of Jesus. And she is also linked in Sue Monk Kidd's version of the story to Gnostic texts, to kind of philosophical communities in Egypt, to priestesses of Isis. It's basically a mixture of presenting this very progressive Jesus with a very progressive wife who is struggling against the roles set out for her because she wants to be a writer and she wants to kind of mean more than she feels like she does within her current social constraints. I personally have a lot of issues with this book, but it's actually not something that I want to discuss in this video because I'm going to be recording a Zoom call with one or more other New Testament scholars to discuss the Book of Longings. So stay tuned for that. But I will say I was not fond of it for a number of reasons. Video forthcoming. The next book I read in March was maybe one of the best books that I'll read all year, I think. I've already posted a review about that, which I will link in the show notes. That is Nine Days, The Race to Save Martin Luther King Jr.'s Life and Win the 1960 Election. And this book is a piece of nonfiction that is about Martin Luther King's imprisonment after the student sit-ins in Atlanta and how they tried to keep him and unjustly punish him for his social causes by basically saying that he was on parole for a minor driving incident from the year before. And this was a huge incident. People from all over the United States were writing in to judges and lawmakers in Georgia. And the book in part examines how JFK and Richard Nixon, who were both in a really tight race for president at the time, responded to the situation and how it may have affected the outcome of the 1960 election. This book was amazing. Um, you can watch my review for it. I'll link it down in the show notes. But if you want a really good piece of history that shows the incredible echo that one moment in time can have for decades, this is a really good read. This month, I also finished up my pre-reading for my read through of James Joyce's Ulysses. So I've got like a Conquering Ulysses video series going, talking about my experience with that. But I read Dubliners and I read A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man. Both of them were very interesting in their unique ways. I talk about them more in depth in the video for Conquering Ulysses pre-reading that I'll link below. But if you want a really interesting perspective on Dublin during James Joyce's lifetime and you want to look at the lives of people who maybe live simple lives, but have a lot of emotional weight to those lives, then these books are really, really fascinating. And I think I'm finally reading them at a time in my life when I'm ready for them. And that's really something special that I'm enjoying right now. The fifth book I read in March was The Lost Apothecary. It's by Sarah Penner, and it was my book of the month pick for, I think, last month. And I really was attracted to the synopsis because basically it is a historical fiction that's being told. There's one story in the present, one story in the past. And the, the root of the story is this apothecary that sells poisons that are meant to be used for men only and not for women. And the idea of murdering men with poison and protecting women sounded pretty great to me. So I went for it. However, the book itself really wasn't as about that as I wanted it to be. Not enough murder. Sorry. And... The plot was like a little bit more, I guess, melodramatic and less vicious than I was hoping it was going to be. It really just ended up being about a sad lady who finds some stuff from the past and turns it into like scholarly work that she never picked up when she was younger. And of course, the depiction of academia is also super unrealistic. It, it wasn't for me. It was like live, laugh, love with poison. So maybe that's your thing. If so, absolutely check it out. And then my last book of the month... I had some really mixed feelings about. It's called Blindfold. It's by Theo Padnos, and it is his memoir of being captured in Syria and being held by an Al-Qaeda branch during the early years of the Syrian revolution. So I think he was imprisoned from 2012 to sometime in 2014. 
And he describes how he, you know, is a, is, a, is a failing reporter. He's looking for work. He thinks, oh, well, I'll just get a ride into Syria and I'll write this amazing piece that gets sold everywhere and it'll, it'll make my career. Instead, he gets captured and tortured and lives in horrible prisons for two years until he's finally released. And it's cool that he lived to tell the tale. However, getting through the tale is sometimes not very pleasant and not actually for the reasons you'd think. So the beginning of the book really, really drags because... He knows that he was an idiot to get into the situation he did. He left Turkey under really sketchy circumstances. He went into Syria with really sketchy people that he had alarm bells about before he went. He went anyway, and things just went completely to hell. And he really drags out the, I was dumb, these are the bad decisions I made part of the book. And it was almost like, just go to prison already so I can get to the part where I'm not sitting here like cringing and being upset at the choices you're making. And I say this as somebody who actually did travel in Syria with just one friend in 2010, and it was lovely. I really loved Syria. I love traveling in the Middle East generally. One day I will go back if it's the last thing I do. But the stuff that he was describing, like he knew fluent Arabic from being in a school in Yemen. Like it was really a he should have known better situation. And it was really hard to read, especially when it went on so long. His descriptions of being in prison, however, were actually really, really interesting because he talks a lot about the kinds of discussions he was able to have with his captors, how one moment they could just be completely brutal to him and then in the next want to have a conversation about America. Um, he has similar experiences with people who are imprisoned with him. And that part was really, really interesting. I really thought it was cool to be able to see some of the paradoxes in thought that extremists have when they look at the United States and it's clear they feel a mixture of hatred and maybe desire. And that that tension exists across lots of different boundary lines that Padnos encounters while he is imprisoned. Um, I'm actually thinking about reading another account that covers some of the same time because for a while, uh, Padnos was imprisoned with a photographer named Matt Schreier who did escape. They actually attempted to escape together and Schreier got away. Padnos did not. They hate each other to this day. And so I kind of want to read the other account just to kind of see like what they both said. Definitely don't read it if you don't want to hear about torture, but there was nothing in there that was so brutal that it was like gonna haunt me all day or anything like that. Padnos did a good job of describing how awful it was without going into so much detail that it'll make you feel ill. So if you want a book that can go on a little bit long, doesn't always get to the point right away, but is really interesting, I thought Blindfold was decent. And those are the books that I read in March. I'm excited about April, especially because I'm on spring break right now and I'm already two books deep. So <laughs> this is a, this is going to be an auspicious month for reading. I'm hoping last month was pretty good and I hope that y'all's were too. Uh, definitely let me know if you read anything particularly interesting in the month of March in the comments. Thanks for watching and happy reading.